Sociology is another one of our new subject offers at A level. And what sociology is, is essentially a study of society, both domestically and worldwide. Skills that are developed in sociology lend themselves to a number of different career pathways. It is a social science, so it will have crossovers with criminology and psychology, but will also require skills in English, in essay writing, and also understanding critical theories and sociological culture. Sociology is a very popular subject nationwide, a lot of students take it, and that's because of its versatility and the fact that students find it interesting because it is a study of the society that we live in. And so when we're asking questions about society, the people around us, why things are the way they are, sociology and the study of it can hopefully answer some of those questions for us. Sociology then is a traditional A-level subject. The handboard that we plan to use at the moment is AQA, but depending on some decisions that are made going forward, this might change. This is a brand new subject, so although AQA is the base that we are working with, that might change by September. Nevertheless, the boards that do sociology all carry very similar specifications. So there won't be a great deal of difference between the content that you actually study. But at the moment, we are going with AQA. The exam weighting is 100% exam. There are three papers at the end of the two-year study. And the entry requirements are five GCSEs at grade four or above, which includes English and maths. So like with a lot of the other newer subjects that you've seen so far, the, the entry requirements mean that this is quite accessible to quite a large majority of students who want to continue to do A level and it will act as, as a third subject for perhaps those people who have got two definites and maybe are looking for that third subject uh, to use alongside those other two. So as said previously, sociology is assessed across three exams which all take place at the end of the second year and these components are studied in order so they will start with paper one or component one, which is looking at education with theory and methods. Now you'll see theory and methods across both paper one and paper three. And that's because theory and methods are a really important part of sociology. So being able to understand different theories and be able to apply them to different scenarios, to different studies. But also methods, so things like methods of research, how to research effectively, how to understand these different components, these different elements um, are also really important. You'll see that all papers are equally split. So paper one, like I said, is about education. So it's the role and function of the education system in society. How education helps to form society, how education contributes to, to the way that um, different people make up different parts of society. Looking at education systems both here and abroad, Looking at why certain people achieve well in, in education and why some people tend not to achieve as well, what the reasons are for that, and processes in schools and the significance of educational policies. So what policies we have in education and how they affect people's chances, um, people's ambitions going forward. The methods are looking at, as I've said about research methods to the study of education. So you'll look at different case studies and you'll understand how to research effectively, which those skills you'll carry forward into paper two and three. Um, as I said as well, theory and methods look at a range of different theories, postmodernity, um, social action theories. We look at research design, different data sources. There's lots and lots of different things, lots of different theory and methods. And you can see some of those specific theory and methods in the AQA sociology specification. In paper two, um, Obviously, in paper one and three, the uh, components are compulsory. But in paper two, there's options of different things that you can study. So the teacher will, will make the choice of what areas are studied across section A and section B. And all of these topic areas are relevant. They're all rich in content. And you'll be able to study a, a kind of certain area of society and, and how that, that contributes to society, essentially. So you'll look at theoretical debate, you'll look at uh, research again, so it's bringing those methods 
that you've learned in, in the first component and applying them to these different optional topics. So for section A, those topics are culture and identity, families and households, health and work, poverty and welfare. So again, your teacher will choose one of these uh, areas and you'll look at that, that one in depth. Similarly for section B, topics that could be studied are beliefs in society, global development, the media, and stratification and differentiation. So again, one of those areas will be chosen. Um, once this, this specification has been planned fully, um, those details will be given to you in terms of what areas and what topics that, that will be studied specifically for paper two. Paper three is very similar to paper one in that paper one looks at education with theory and methods, but paper three looks at crime and deviance. Now, crime and deviance, you'll see here a lot of crossover with criminology. So you might think to yourself, if I'm taking criminology, should I take sociology? I've had that question um, a couple of times already from, from year 11. And, and the answer to that is, is yes and no, really. If what you're studying in criminology um, is, is a strong area for you, then, then you'll thrive in this particular part of sociology. Similarly, though, if that's an area in, in criminology that you are struggling with, the crime and deviant areas, then you're also going to struggle with it in sociology. So it really depends on on how you approach that particular area and how well you get on with it in, in both subjects. Now, in terms of specific foci for this area, um, crime and deviant here looks at things like social order and social control, the distribution of crime and deviance. So looking at um, where crime and deviance takes place, recent patterns and trends, whether that's changed over time or why. Look at globalization, so we'll look at crime in a contemporary society from a global perspective. And then things like crime control, how it's uh, how it's surveyed, prevention and punishment, and, and the criminal justice system. So that particular last bullet point, you'll see the closest um, the closest things in common with criminology. So it's not like you have to take one or the other to sociology and criminology, you can take them both, but you can see that the, there is some quite stark similarities um, across the two different subjects. So then why study sociology? Why is sociology um, a, a good subject for you to take at A level? Well, first of all, it gives you that critical awareness of social processes and change. Society is changing all the time. If you ask your parents how society was um, when they were your age and grandparents and so on, you'll see that society has changed a lot and continues to change and evolve as you grow up. And so being able to engage in uh, theoretical debates around key themes about how society was, how society is, and, and how it will be potentially um, are really important critical things that, that will enable you to develop your worldview, but also give you a lot of kind of cross-subject cross, cross -subject knowledge that you'll be able to use in, you know, in, in a wide range of study uh, in higher education. You'll develop research skills. So You've seen the skills and methods that run across two different components. You'll develop those skills in a lot of depth. You'll engage with those uh, research method methods. And when you go into, or if you go into higher education, should I say, those research methods are going to serve you really well because you're going to have to do a lot of research at university. But similarly, even if you're not going into a higher education setting, you're going to have to be able to look at research methods potentially in, in jobs. You're going to have to research those jobs in the first place in terms of what you want to do. So these skills are really transferable and really useful for you. You're going to be able to explain and apply a number of different theories and perspectives. And that's really important as well, because it's important that you can articulate yourself, but also that you can have a point of view and put it across both verbally and in writing. And so being able to do that um, is really important and, and doing sociology will, will enable you to do that well. And then finally, it can help you to access a range of university courses and career paths. So I said earlier on, for, for a lot of people, this might be a third subject. They, they might know one or two subjects that they really want to take, and they're not sure what that third one is going to be. Sociology can act as, as a really good complementary subject to, to two that you already want to take, because it's got a lot of, of transferable skills that we've talked about already. But also, it's because of this, it's going to be really useful in a range of different social science courses at university, also any courses that require you to write at length and for you to apply theory as well.